And here we are, week nine, a huge week at that as well as we get very close to the finals here already in game. Our first one, De La Salle Knights versus St. Monica's College. Omega here as well and already looking like a goal. Great save at Duralic and uh, some exciting action for us already. Chris is here with me as usual. Are you enjoying this already, man? Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty entertaining stuff to start off the bat here as uh, we'll get our first goal just like that after very uh, continual pressure from St. Monica's. Barry Keller just able to finally break through. As well, the Dallas Hall defense just continually pressured through, and uh, yeah, it was a good way to get the first goal on board for uh, this orange side. Yeah, nice to come into the Victaz region here with two teams who are, should be fairly evenly matched here. They're both at the exact same spot on the ladder with uh, six wins and two losses to their names. But that's a good shot from Kyle, and it's looking like St. Monica's is going to take the upper hand quite quickly here. Yeah, and it's very important as well that this is the uh, final week, actually, of regular season action for the uh, regional stages. Uh, only nine weeks. The 10th week now is going to be uh, with, dealt with uh, tiebreakers and the semi-finals. So it'll be interesting to see how all these teams uh, will eventually make it through here. We do have to talk about that, that but that will be a little bit later on, as uh, for most of the regions, it is actually fairly interesting to see what the uh, current playoff scenarios look like as... This opening minute of our first game of the evening gets past us here. It's looking very good for the uh, side of some monikers, really putting the boot in it to De La Salle at the moment. As now, the ball just gets pushed closer to the net here, but the blue side of De La Salle able to save it for now. He tries to bring it to the wall, but will there be a team to find it? No, there will not. And a little bit of a miss on the boost grab there as well as going to put Dalen Sal in a bad position here. They have rotated back well. A little bit of a double commit there isn't going to do too much to them. An open net opportunity, but nobody there. Fast enough, it will be a goal though as Crispy Salt comes through and smashes that one home. Yeah, it just came back from a few little mistakes there from the... Uh Orange side, because we saw they were just quickly rally after that uh, that, uh, that really uh, long attack from Simonica's and well, able to just thread the needle, bait out the defenders as well, and just get it in for their first response here to Dallas Alba. Fiasco merely looking for a reply, won't be able to get it past the uh, two man defense on the line here, as Jerelik just trying his best to block off his opponent, but eventually the ball will get punted away from here. Ooh. Kyle just leaving it to Fiasco to pick up here. A little bit of a risky play, but it does eventually work out for some monikers as the ball now gets taken back into the midfield here. But at the moment, they'll be looking for a few more goals here this orange side as they've only got a one goal lead to work with with two and a bit minutes remaining here. This could be that second goal back. No, it won't. Crispy Salt will come back through and clear it away. Yeah, good little uh, fake on uh, multiple players there. They identified the opportunity to uh, really get something out of that double commit and uh, were able to get bait those players out, but no goal out of it yet. We have seen this game even up fairly well now. Uh, only one goal in it, and that's kind of what we expected out of these teams, being that they are at that same ladder position. So it's going to be a t close one, and uh, it is going to mean a lot to these guys as well. So as uh, St. Monica's hold on to that one goal lead. They're going to try and improve on it. Nearly gets the backboard, but it's going to get blocked away. The little bump there as well, not helping them put that one in as Fiasco goes up for another centre. Misses it, but Kyle can collect at the bottom and uh, get that second goal back like you were talking about. Yeah, Fiasco just missing the ball, and that's actually worked out perfectly for St. Monica's. Just completely disrupted what their opponents were doing in De La Salle and yeah just having enough for Kyle to come through and just get a pretty nice goal at the end here so two goal lead back up this could be a 30 if Fiasco nearly going full mechanics but once again leaves it to Kyle and well this is a good way to quickly rebuild that lead up again three goals now with 107 seconds remaining here looking pretty hard for De La Salle at the moment here Gex. Yeah, I mean, we do have some time for them to come back, uh, uh, but uh, it's doable, but the 
De La Salle Knights need to make sure that they've got that backboard defended. Uh, that's two goals in a row have come off of that backboard with no contest before it gets back down all the way to the ground, really. So they need somebody there waiting for that to hit backboard. They need to make sure that defense is carried out, but Turalic doesn't even need defense. He's going to come up, get to that ball first, and hammer one home again. It just wasn't a good clear there, really. For uh, Simonikas, that led to that goal. Jurelik was in the perfect spot to pick up the ball or pretty much from right in front of him and send it on into the net. He's still got a two-goal lead here, though, uh, St. Monikas, so plenty to work with as we get into the final fleeting moments of this opener. They might look for a three-goal lead again. Early Carl gets so close, but just unable to finish off the dose there. And now Fiasco's going to go up here, and he's read that ball perfectly. Bates out here, and just like that, the free goal lead is restored. Yeah, beautiful goal, but you've got a feel for hit. I mean, there was so few options left available to him. Tried to tap it off to that right-hand side just to get it away from the front of net, but uh, realistically, yeah, just not that many options available to him, and that's going to all but secure this game for the De La Salle Knights. A minute left, a three-goal lead is a big lead, particularly here and now against St. Monica with the confidence they have and the abilities they're showing. And uh, it's going to be a tough one to come back for, but you have to say that we have seen the De La Knights be warming up this match a little bit. Uh, as this has gone on, we've seen more out of them and uh, even a few more errors out of St. Monica's as it goes along as well. So uh, it's not an insurmountable task, but they are going to have to take this very seriously in game two. They are indeed here, especially considering both teams currently six and two, their records. And well, that means they're all tied up for four along with our three other teams here. So if they do win this game, they will make playoffs, but if they lose it, uh, that will be it for them this season as Valley Kale nearly gets another goal in, but will be denied by Crispy Salt as, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, situation currently on the ladder in Victoria. Our three teams currently on seven wins and a solitary loss, that being uh, OACC, YVG Spuds and Frankston High as this first game ends. Simonica's will win, and will win quite easily, all things considered. So those three teams, do they win? They're pretty much into playoffs. Do they lose? Well, they might be taking on one of these teams here in a tiebreakers in a few weeks' time. Yeah, I mean, St. Monica's took that out with a lot of confidence and uh, a huge goal lead there as well. They got that goal lead fairly early as well and were able to improve on it. And uh, they really just came in with a lot of confidence and uh, they seem very, very warm where Dale and Knights maybe are a little cold off the bat here and uh, had some struggle early in the game. They did come back and manage to hold them off a little, but uh, it's it's been a very tough game for them and it may prove to be a really tough series for them if they continue the way they have. They need to really make sure they get on top of those double commits uh, and make sure that their defense is in position. They need they need somebody to watch that backboard and make sure that the uh, mechanics that St. Monica's are displaying aren't as useful. Yeah, they do need to just try and deny St. Monica's those mechanics and really love field position as well. Just felt the majority of that game the ball was either in the midfield or on the attack for that orange side. So you really need to try and win the ball a little bit more here at De La Salle. At, they won't have any chance of bringing this to a game free and keeping their regular or their playoff hopes alive as Fiasco drops it onto the backboard early on. And look who's there. Carl to finish it off again. Early lead back to Monica's. This is one of the better plays I've seen them make so far. Off ceiling, comes back down. Hit is available and very close, but... That powerful shot just read beautifully into the top half of that goal and made it incredibly difficult to save. So a really, really good way to take that first goal out uh, as St. Monica's continues to dominate the De La Salle side here. And that was going to be very dangerous as well. A nice counter-attack from De La Salle, but they just couldn't finish off oh. as hit register. Probably should have left it to his teammate there. Jurelik probably had the angle to get it on in, but just like that, this could turn into something for St. Monica's. This ball was up in a dangerous position for a little bit, but eventually sent back to where it started in the defensive corner for him. This is 
Once again, while well, I was talking about the St. Monica's here, they're gaining more control of the ball than their opponents, and it's just really stifling their opportunities. Also, goals so far have come from counter-attacks, and, well, for De La Salle, those counter-attacks, well, they can come in thick and fast at times, but they're not always reliable options. They really need to try and fight a little bit more in the midfield here to get that ball a bit closer to target, because... They're going to keep putting themselves in positions like this where, sure, they can save him this time around, but if Carl's a little bit closer, maybe he goes for him. Maybe he just finds the line again to double up that lead. In saying that, though, there is only one here, and they can even this up fairly easily as well as long as they keep up what they're doing. Their defense has left a few little holes, but only after already making it difficult for the shots, and uh, that's been a savior for De La Salle so far this game, and keeping them down to that one goal lead. Earlier I saw a back pass there in defense as well that really took them out of trouble and I even turned it into a counter-attack. You don't actually see that in these series that much and I was very very happy to see that kind of communication in the team and uh, that kind of synergy being used there. That's a great clear out though. Maybe an opportunity now is hit yep. register gets one downfield and will even this one up. Once again it comes off that counter here. Hit register just steals the ball away and well Everyone at the Monikers is pretty much going on to attack here. They try to respond, but they're just a bit too far back to do so. So, tell us how they get the equaliser here. But, it's a little bit more work for them to do here. To try and uh, bring this game in to a decider. Especially when it just feels like some Monikers. They just continue to build up that pressure, especially in the midfield here. They do lose the ball in pretty um, opportune moments, but... For the most part, they just keep that pressure up, and it normally leads to some decent chances here. We might see no one develop here as Carl picks up the ball, gets a pass, nearly both defenders here. Crispy oh, has to just tap it away, hit register, brings it into midfield, but just unable to get it through quickly enough this time around. And that's going to open it up for some monikers once again. They go for the backboard, they go for the double backboard play. Now a triple commit comes out from De La Salle. We'll see the clear, but we'll deny him an effective chance to counter. You'd like to see there was a little bit of backboard defense available there, and that made the shot a lot more tricky. Even if they weren't able to get to it, it makes them question, it makes the attempts that they will go for uh, much more tricky. So, you know, just having that man available, even if they can't get to it, is always the better option. Uh, I, whenever I play with somebody who's uncertain about their ability, I always just tell them, just go. You know, there, there's, there's such a big difference between being able to get to the ball and your opponent thinking you can get to the ball and that's a big big deal uh even when they can make an attempt it affects the game so much and right now that's what dale and knights are able to do coming in here and making saint monica's question their abilities question the mechanics they've got and these backward shots aren't reaching their targets kyle will finally get one in there Yep, as soon as you mention it, a backboard shot appears and it opens up for Carl as this will be Velikal just to get the uh, setup. But still results in a goal here for some Monikers and well, they're just all stuck on the ground there. The tires were filled with glue and they just couldn't get off the ground in time to react. And this could be another quick response here for some Monikers. Immediately back onto the backboard here, Fiasco and Carl was just waiting but Ball's being tapped away, Crispy Salt now onto the counter, but Carl underneath with a little bit more pace, able to just carry it into the corners. One minute remaining here, Fiasco tries to clear up, but Crispy Salt blocks it in, and he keeps it into the attack as well, so some good attacking defense from him. For the moment, Jurelik leaves the ball to his own devices, Carl comes through, gets it to the midfield, and that's a little bit of an unfortunate touch there, just slows him up yet again, but it might turn into something nice here, but Fiasco once again gets up in time to push it out of danger. Finally, we get to see uh, De La Salle try and use that backboard, but just the defense holding up for St. Monica's right now, and this is a much closer game, only one in it, a good shot from Jurelik. Won't be able to take that yet. Hit register's available. He's going to send it out to the side and look for that center. Gets the read as well. Fiasco is going to send it downfield, and it's a big clear. He's got a member upfield as well. The little touch there from Duralik will be able to make that a little bit safer. A little bit of miscommunication will keep that away as well, but they need to get this off the ground. Zero seconds That's upon up. us. They need to make a shot right now. They keep it up. One more touch might do it, but it reaches ground, and St. Monica's Omega will take the game and the series. Yeah, they'll 
force the fight a little bit harder there, some monikers, but they do enough and they take out the series 2-0, guaranteeing him a spot in to tiebreakers in a few weeks' time. Let me get the actual date here. Uh, I believe it's the, uh, where is it? Here it is, on the uh, 22nd of July, so a little bit of a break for them now, but they should, uh, Oh, sorry, the week before tiebreak. So, actually, will be on the 15th of July. We'll be seeing them next, but it's been well-deserved from St. Monica's. They were the uh, better team overall. And, well, for De La, De La Salle, they did lift in that second game, but, unfortunately, mm. just a little bit too late. Yeah, I think it did come down that first game to uh, just St. Monica's being a lot more warmed up. Uh, they, they came in prepared for that, and uh, De La Salle maybe didn't come in quite as uh, hot off the bat. Maybe there was a bit of uh, preparation from St. Monica's that De La Salle can learn from in the future and um, come back, but uh, we'll spell the end for them here. It, you have to say, though, um, despite uh, St. Monica's being just that little bit better in, I think, almost every skill there, there really wasn't a lot in that. De La Salle played beautifully. They uh, they actually had fairly good communication as well, but St. Monica's just just outplayed them that little bit. They go through, and uh, they're going to face their uh, tiebreaker uh, shortly, and um, man, uh, what a privilege it is for them to go forward, but uh, we've got more teams tonight still fighting it out. That was our Victoria and Tasmanian uh, teams. We've still got New South Wales and Queensland up next, and uh, uh, yeah, man, it's yeah, I, yeah, I've got to say that there is there is a, a standout player we've got to mention first, though. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, MVP, uh, I'm going to go with Fiasco for this one. Uh, look, he didn't get most of the goals, but he got a lot of good setups. He did a very good job in defense in that second game. It was a little bit... Uh, it was a little bit muted, but it was still what they needed to really stop off the... Uh, well, especially that really strong attack from De La Salle in the... Uh, final few moments so yeah for me fiasco the uh, mvp of that series yeah a lot of passes as well i've got to agree with you there uh really uh, a man that could be used all over field so a huge huge contributor and that that's what uh earns him that title i i, I agree entirely so uh we'll see you very shortly with that new south wales queensland matchup and see which of those teams can make it through as well uh we'll be back shortly with those games <laughs> 